Precision anchoring requires a fast and positive hook set as it's essential to hold at specific distances up current of a wreck, section of reef, or prominent bottom structure. The key here is to choose an anchor that's sized according to the length of your boat, an extra long length of chain, and coils of road also based on vessel size. My boat is a 33-foot Mako Center console. Therefore, I use a ratnel or plow design. I'll use a shackle to attach 30 feet of 5 16 chain to the anchor's mud palm, which is the aft end of the anchor. This creates a reverse pull when needed. I'll run the chain down along the shank using heavy monofilament line to secure a link to the anchor's shank eye so that the anchor line pulls from its normal position. If the anchor fouls on the bottom, driving a boat forward will pop the monofilament line. The chain straightens out and pulls the anchor from the opposite direction, backing it out of potential grave. The extra long length of chain adds weight and creates a fall scope by keeping the end of the road down on the bottom, establishing that straight forward pull on the shank, which is necessary for the anchor to dig in. My road or anchor line is either 5 8 inch for general applications, which is easier to grip, or 1 half inch for deep water jobs. The 1 half inch road creates less drag as it descends to bottom. I have two 350 foot coils of road which can be joined within seconds. The leading section of road should have a thimble spliced into both ends, since one end will be joined to the anchor line via a shackle. Additional sections of road should have an alpine clip on one end and a thimble on the other. Thimble to thimble also works with shackles. When more road is required, simply clip a new section of line onto the thimble of the preceding section. Retrieving such a heavy system requires the use of a mooring type inflatable ball, which increases the angle of the road to break the anchor line free and float it to the surface where it's easily pulled in. The simple setup consists of about three feet of 3 8 inch nylon rope attached to the ball. On the opposite end is a stainless spring clip that connects to an open end stainless ring about six inches in diameter. When it's time to move, the steel ring is placed around the anchor road and hooked onto the spring clip. The buoy is tossed overboard. As the boat motors towards the anchor, quartering the current to avoid the lime, its motion forces the ball down the road where the increasing pressure and angle created by its descent pops the anchor out. Providing you increase the boat speed as the anchor is rising, the row will be pulled through the ring until it hangs up in the anchor, floating the anchor to the surface. As for my windless system on my 33-foot Mako Center console, I regard that more for entertainment purposes and not fishing. With an independent anchor, we can quickly clip a float to one end of a coil of road and toss it all overboard if a big fish requires chasing. After boating or releasing that fish, we simply drive it back to the float, retrieve the road, clean it off, and resume fishing. You can't do that with a windless system.